All right, welcome back to the Malapert Smart Podcast. We got Vlad, the wrestling expert. We got Robert, the frozen Asian. And I'm Kahan. I'm your host, the Malapert Smart himself. I'm here to criticize wrestling. Usually we criticize bad modern wrestling, but in this case today, we're actually going to watch some old stuff that we actually like. So if there's anything to criticize, I will, but mostly it'll probably just be praise for it and happy to see something that isn't modern AEW or slow-ass WWE, slow, boring-ass modern WWE or crazy, ridiculous modern AEW. Going back in time, we're on the middle of a little odyssey going through WCW after Hulk Hogan turned into a bad guy, which was... A monumental moment in wrestling history. He was yellow and red for so many years. The, the hero to the little kids, all the little Hulkamaniacs. And then they finally pulled the trigger on him and turned him heel at Bash at the Beach as he joined Paul and Nash, who came in as like this outsider gang type of guys who just go around beating people up. We watched a segment from a couple weeks before this. If you want to go back and watch our review of the Nitro where they beat up everyone by the production truck, left Arn Anderson and Rey Mysterio and everybody lay in, was mayhem. Mayhem. And then we covered Hulk Hogan actually going through and winning the WCW title against the Giant at Hog Wild, which was uh, the pay-per-view right before this that we watched this. So now we're going to go up to August 12, 1996. This is WCW Nitro. Let's watch some old wrestling, man. You guys ready for this? This is Nitro yeah. from August yeah. 12, 1996. This is still my favorite intro of pretty much any major wrestling show. Let's watch it from the beginning. With the videos on the buildings. I don't know how they did that, but it looked pretty cool. Lots of explosions. It was Nitro, that's why. Well, it was Nitro, uh, right? Dyna <laughs> dynamite everywhere. Was this intro produced by Michael Bay? Uh, yeah, <laughs> lots of explosives. WCW Monday Nitro! And here we are, Tony, in the middle of nowhere! It's Casper, Wyoming. <laughs> that is pretty much the middle of nowhere. <laughs> the best goes not wrong. Yeah, but Shivani's trying to put Wyoming over. Monday Nitro here on TNT! Hi, everyone! From the Great American West! The Great American Tony West. Shivani, along with living legend Larry Zabisco. This has to be considered a very dark day in the annals of World Championship Wrestling. Two days removed from Hulk Hogan becoming the WCW World Heavyweight Champion. Two days removed from Hulk Hogan desecrating the prestigious gold belt that's been the symbol of World Championship Wrestling for many, many years. Later on in this telecast, we will show you the startling, revealing footage of what happened at Hogwild and Sturgis this past Saturday, Larry. Well, as you can tell by my choice of garb tonight, it reflects the mood. It is a dark day in WCW. I he's am wearing black like he's at a funeral. disappointed in the athletes, in the Dungeon of Doom, in the Four Horsemen, when Hall and Nash, when they hit the ring against the Giant, where was the so-called brotherhood of WCW that was going to stand up against the New World Order? Where was Sting and Lex Luger? You know, that's Sting a good Lex point, Vlad. We didn't talk about that when we reviewed that match and watched it. Correct. How come nobody Correct. came in to help the Giant from WCW? I have no idea. I mean, outside of the fact in his story, Hogan had to win the championship. But yes, I don't have a reason why. why well, Giant was it. in the Dungeon of Doom, so he had his guys. And none of them came and helped either. Yeah, so. what was up with that? Where was Ming? Where was the Barbarian? Where was I mean, all maybe no guys? one thought that someone would come in and interfere and cheat <laughs> like this. Or... Yeah, yeah, no, that never has that happened. That never happened. Like... In wrestling? Never no in way. Wrestling history. No, no way, no way. All right, yeah. Sure I... you some of what went down had their own problems. Let's take a look. Oh, at they're going to go over Ligers. the Sting and Luger Ligers. versus Hall and Nash oh, match came to Sturgis, where Nick Patrick right. had that questionable yeah, yeah. action. It was questionable. Or he actually he was... elbowed Luger whatever he did to Saturday. Luger's blade. He, he clipped Lex Luger from clip. behind but we have right. with his Ligers. forearm. Controversy. Luger had Hall yeah. in the rack. Sting had Nash in the Scorpion Deathlock. Inadvertently, Nick Patrick... The referee was hit. Now, here are the questions. Did Nick Patrick, in retaliation, <laughs> hit Luger behind the knee? Or was it maybe oh my God. an accident? And what about the count? Obviously, to me, it was a very quick count from Nick Patrick. One, two, three. He obviously was hurt, but he raised the hand of the outsiders in victory. Mm. And I have to so say, they're still... very controversial, a tainted victory for the outsiders. Well, I don't know if the count was fast. Obviously, from the footage, Nick Patrick did get kicked in the face by 
Lex Luger. Referees, you're being little skinny guys. So they're all not sure. I'm they're not like, oh, we're not sure, I guess. We'll find out later exactly what happened. We have a tremendous program, plus Ric Flair against the Macho Man Randy Savage for the U.S. title. On Anderson, the Giant, three title matches, two hours. As we get to the ring today, Penzer for the first bout this week on Nitro. All right, so we're going to skip this first bout. Opening bout is not that interesting. High voltage, huh? Some guys from the Dungeon of Doom. Anyways, that's not what I want to focus on. We're here to focus on NWO stuff. Good intro. They hyped up the show. They got Macho Man and Flair coming up. We, okay. We so they were making announcements after that match, and Sting and Luger come out because they got called out by Zabisco earlier in the show. Remember? He's like, where were they? Where was everyone to help when the NWO? So here comes Sting and Luger to answer for themselves. We hate to break the rules and bust in here, but we're sick and tired of following the rules. I'm not spending another sleepless night after what happened last night. Isn't that right, Stinger? How about a little challenge oh, yeah. here? As a matter of fact, that makes two of us that will not have one more sleepless night. Everybody's talking about a controversy that happened in Sturgis. We don't care about controversy. What we want to do is clear it up right here, right now. Wait a minute, you're making a challenge for right now? They're in the ring. Well, they're in the ring now, but where were they in Hog Wild when we needed them? They were in the ring in Hog Wild, Larry. All right, so they're in there. They're going to try to call out the outsiders, but obviously no one's going to come out. Surprise. I'm going to skip forward into the show a little bit. Let's see who we got. We got a Diamond Dallas Page match. DDP, who ends up having a really long, incredibly vicious feud with the NWO himself, but this is before that, so he's not really... Yeah. He's just a wrestler on his own at this point. Yeah, he's not as over as he's going to be in about maybe six months. Yeah, I guess we'll see the progression of how this goes. He's getting booed here. He's kind of a bad guy. He's a heel hero, yeah. He's Came to the ring smoking a cigar. He's facing off against Renegade. Some, some random guy, the Renegade. The Renegade and Diamond Dallas to battle. I think what's very interesting here is there's still a lot of really bad gimmicks in WCW. Like the Renegade, for example, they're still stuck in like 1987 or 1984 even. They had to do away with all of this stuff. This is a good, I think you mentioned it maybe in one of the other shows that even though they kind of have the NWO thing going, they still have a whole bunch of their old gimmicks that are not really good or that are kind of stuck in a certain time. The Renegade is one of those gimmicks, I would say. So who wins this? Here comes the well, diamond cutter. We know who's going to win this. I mean, we're pretty sure. <laughs> DDP wins. Hits him with the diamond cutter, which I always thought the RKO was basically a stolen diamond cutter. Oh, yeah. Even DDP would tell you that. I don't know if he's the first guy to do like a cutter type of move. I like that move. Yeah. It looks it looks devastating. I'll put it again. I'll put it again. It looks like he smashed his face on the floor. Out of nowhere. <laughs> it's not out of nowhere. Well, I guess the RKO is out of nowhere, so that's a little different. But... It's kind of like LA Knight's move, right? Sort of? Kind of like yeah. a cutter? Yeah. I remember Sting and Luger came out at the beginning and they called out the outsiders and they didn't show up. So then... They cut to the back, and I think this is WCW cameraman backstage with the Outsiders and Hogan. <laughs> oh, man. You know, all of a sudden, now they act like we're important, you know? Yeah. I can't <laughs> believe the audacity that these guys have. I mean, we're on New World Order time right now. I mean, you can make all the challenges you want to, boys, but hey, we're in our gear, but we'll do this when we feel ready. I can't figure it out. I can't figure it out. We beat them at Bash of the Beach in a six-man. <laughs> We did what we say we do at Hog Wild. We beat them, and the main thing we accomplished, Hulkster took their belt. you notice it's NWO belt now. Tell these two punks something. I heard some whining and crying about Nick Patrick. You guys blaming your loss on a referee. Senior. He's a fine referee. Senior Don't blame it on him. Senior Nick Patrick, you a lost, fine referee. You lost at Hog Wild, and you want to fight us? You're going to get to it later tonight. It's right, Joe. And you, you lose you know, again. Well, you know, we disagree every once in a while. It's okay. You don't have anything to prove. And all of a sudden, they didn't want to stay anywhere around. Now they're <laughs> calling me, calling my agent. They're banging on the door. I, I get tired of getting up and answering the door here a minute ago. It's the same old thing. Now they want their chance. If you guys want to have a good workout or something like that, maybe you could have fun with those punks but the thing that really tears you up is they haven't figured out who the fourth and fifth guy are i mean we've given them all the hints. Can we bring them in? no not yet <laughs> stay there yeah. stay there but what are they going to do i mean they're not even smart to figure this thing out first thing we need to get rid of is this thing is that giant <laughs> cleaned his clock he's a loser and sting and luger you lose
users to talk. Can I, can I use your line, Hulkster? Go for it. What you gonna do when Hulkamania, the Outsiders, and the New World Order runs wild on you? So there's the NWO just chilling in the back, being so cool, as cool as they are. So they did accept Sting and Luger's challenge. They said, we'll come out tonight, we'll fight you. So that's coming up. All right, so let's see who else we got. Next match is Conan. Conan against Jim Powers. Conan wins. I think he cheats. Yeah. Well, because he's also a heel, I think. He's got, he's got his foot all over the rope right there. <laughs> I skipped the match. I just skipped to the end. But they're going to let him cut a promo. So I guess we're going to listen to a Conan promo because he's going to talk about the NWO. Conan, a great international champ. You, uh, I think, compared yourself to the great Hulk Hogan. And what I saw here, I think, is shades of Hulk Hogan, Conan. When you had your body up on a rope to help you get the victory. Here's our camera. Hey. We'll turn you around this way. Your opinion's irrelevant. Do you pay my checks? No, then shut up. Let me tell you something. <laughs> Ever since I've been here, these people don't like you. I can't understand why. <laughs> and why they can't take a ticket to come and see me? You mean Gene is body. so good. Let me tell you. <laughs> it's something. ridiculous how good he is. Ever since the New World Order came into town, they've been syncing up to join. They've been beating people up with bats, slamming car trunks on their head, throwing cruiserweights in the trailers head first. In Mexico, they say, whoever fails a plan, plans to fail. I got a foolproof plan. Conan is sticking behind WCW in this war against the NWO. So look out, NWO! Thank you very much, Conan, making a statement. As you know, he is the current reigning Mexican heavyweight champ. There you go. I don't know. What, what do you guys think of that? Yeah, he wasn't bad. Huh? Yeah, not a bad promo. Has to do with what's going on, the storyline, the NWO storyline. Get the reaction from someone who's kind of just in the company. They gave him some time to talk there about Ron Studd versus Chris Benoit. Wow. So he's coming out with his future wife that he murders. Always weird to see this. <laughs> Are you going to that every single time? Wow. Yeah, to the people who don't know about this story, yes. Just so you know, the girl on the left is Chris Benoit's future wife, and he murders her and her kid. And his kid. And there's, I guess there's a couple of surviving kids, though. Chris Benoit Jr., his name is, right? Uh, is he? Chris Benoit Jr.? I didn't know that. That's his name. I think so. So anyways, this, this is a... I'm going to skip this Chris Benoit match. It's interesting, but it's on Peacock if you want to go back and watch this whole match. But, Benoit wins. Wait, they, 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 show, they show this on Peacock? Are you sure? I don't think Benoit's on Peacock. Oh, no, you're right. It's not on Peacock. Oh, so should I go back I mean, and show I, the whole match? Then? I, do, I don't no, think there's no. any Benoit content on uh, public. Uh, you're right, you're uh, right. I forgot about that. I just say that because I usually say that when I forward through the matches. I'm like, we're not watching the whole thing here. No, we don't have to go back. We get it. Benoit beats yeah. some guy that's yeah. kind of a jobber. And then they gave him time to cut a promo. It wasn't really a good promo, in my opinion. I listened to it. Just something about how he's here to fucking cripple people or whatever the fuck. Because he's the crippler. Yeah, he's very serious about his wrestling. He's Canadian. I didn't, I didn't really catch anything good off this promo, but they did give him some time to talk. People have complaints that Bischoff didn't give him promo time. Huh? I'm going to show him this episode. I think this segment is interesting. It's the one minute leading up to the nine o'clock hour. So look how they build up to the hour. It's basically like a restart to the show. They're going to cover how the Steiners lost to Harlem Heat at the pay-per-view, which we didn't show. But at the end, Sherry hitting Scott Steiner with powder. Colonel Barker breaking his walking cane over the head of Scott Steiner. And Harlem Heat retains the world tag team belts. But coming up here on the second hour, it's going to be a return match between those two teams. Ladies and gentlemen, we okay, so we got a rematch. Under a minute now to hour number two. Look at the countdown. And I want to tell you, with that's a good idea. Rick the countdown's not a bad idea. So I kind of like Savage it. Savage for the U.S. title, the World Tag Team title, like we just talked about, the Cruiserweight title on the line, and the acceptance by the Outsiders to wrestle here tonight against Sting and Lex Luger. There's no doubt about it. Probably the hottest second hour that we've ever had, as we are now less than 30 seconds out. Yeah, no doubt about it. Uranium 235 and plutonium. 
coming together tonight in the second half at Nitro. Again, Macho Man hates Ric Flair's guts, but I want to see the New World Order pay for what happened, and Lex Luger and Sting better get the job done. Plus footage of what happened at Hog Wild as we take it to Eric and Bobby, our two. So they switched commentator teams right on the hour. It went to Bischoff and Heenan sitting up top. Oh, look, listen to this. But I can ask you the $64,000 question, Eric Bischoff. Where were you last week and why did you desert me? Well, where I was and what I was doing, basically I was taking care of some business. We'll just let it go with that. Coming up next, the world tag. Huh. Ah, so yes, yes. And so that's interesting. That's the first time kind of Bischoff has been called into question. He just wasn't there for a week, and they were like kind of weirded out by why wasn't he there. They did mention it last week when he wasn't there, like, where's Bischoff? He just kind of gave like a vague answer, but that was that. And here's two guys that without question... Okay, so this is a rematch. So this is going to be a hot hour. They've really hyped this up. They want ratings today. They got three big matches. They got the tag team title rematch because there was interference at the pay-per-view. The Steiners against... Here's Harlem Heat coming out. We all remember their amazing theme song. The minds and the souls of WCW fans. He's basically ripped off the belt and desecrated it. We'll show it all to you later on. But coming it's Bischoff talking about Hogan desecrating the WCW title. So terrible to him. He can't sleep at night because of this. <laughs> As you guys know, Bischoff joins the NWO too. So everybody's hidden. They're hidden members basically at this point. What happened at the end of this match? We'll just cover the ending. It was a interference. Sherry and everybody was interfering and, and Nick Patrick called. Uh, disqualification. Right when the Steiners were going to win, too. Oh, so, so they were going to win the belt, but it ended up being a DQ. Okay. Yeah, so Nick Patrick called for a DQ. Nick Patrick also. Nick Patrick. In the middle of it. Yeah, so that'll come In the middle of it all. Here's Bischoff talking about Hogan winning the title at Hogwarts and covers how he beat up his old friend Brutus Beefcake after the match just to send a message to people. What's next? Rey Mysterio, Mysterio. Jr. was so tiny against Ultimo Dragon. So. Ultimo Dragon, yes, yes. Fan of these type of matches, bud? I was at the time, for sure. <laughs> there you go, that was this cool, was huh? Ultimate the Dragon and Rey Mysterio had some great matches from what I remember. I'm gonna forward through that though. I'm not gonna watch Do that. Dominic's father. Yeah, Eddie and Ray are on this show. Eddie fought Ric Flair at the pay-per-view. Ric Flair retained the U.S. title. Interesting matchup. So Ric Flair's coming out. He's the U.S. champion. He's going to face the Macho Man. That's a good match, right? Flair, very marquee. Oh, yeah. Those are two marquee names, of course. Superstar matchup on WCW. I wonder what was going on on Raw. It would be interesting to do a side-by-side -side comparison and see who had the better show that day. Cause this is a pretty strong one. So here comes Macho yeah. Man. He's gonna run to the ring like a, a crazy psycho he is. <laughs> Great character. Great character. So this was a high energy match. <laughs> Ric Flair had the two girls with him at the side, so they kind of helped him interfere. So I'll skip to some of that. If you ever seen Miss Elizabeth interfere in a match, just slap Randy Savage right there. Miss Elizabeth, or she slapped him right across the face, and he lunged at it. He'd have got his hands on it, he'd have hurt that woman. A lot of history in that slap. She slapped him like she hated him. There's woman kicking Randy Savage. <laughs> it's pretty funny that Ric Flair is using those two girls to his advantage in this match but here's the ending so randy savage is on the outside and he's gonna turn back the padding he's gonna want to use the concrete but hollywood hogan shows up Patrick is in the ring. Nick Patrick in the ring calling for assistance. The Macho Man leveled with a metal chair gets tossed into the ring and now is when we need security. But Hogan did not lay a hand on Ric Flair and they've been leveling everybody with ball bats. Wait a minute. This stinks. 
Hogan. <laughs> and he's got his foot on the rope. The dirtiest player in the game. <laughs> Wait, there wasn't a DQ after he hit him with the chair? Well, no, he didn't see it. He wasn't he didn't looking. See it. His back was turned. Uh, nonchalantly. And of course, Nick Patrick was the referee again. Yes. What? Blair is the dirtiest player in the game. Let's forward a little bit next. So they finally cover Hogan winning the title. They show that. It's pure. <laughs> it's simple. Right now, let's go to me, Gene Okerlund. You know, I must tell you, Eric, it is grand larceny. There's a dark cloud that hangs over World Championship Wrestling tonight, and especially here in Casper, Wyoming. We have one man who is laid out of the ring. That's the macho man, Randy Savage. We'll keep you posted on his condition. Now you talk about referees getting their palms streets. You talk about wrestlers being on the take. Hulk Hogan, what you have done to a man that I know that you have known for many, many years. The booty man. And now this tonight, where in the devil is the New World Order going? Well, all of a sudden, brother, the New World Order is real important around here. First, we take the WCW title. Easily, I might add, we transform it into the new world order belt. And then all of a sudden, red turns to green, brother, as you see the macho man, one of my former friends, laying out in the middle of the square circle, brother. The way I feel right now, there's just no stopping the new world order, mean gene. What about Ric Flair? Ric Flair's going to try to stop you this Thursday night, 8.05 Eastern Time on TBS at the Clash of the Champions. You're going to have your hands full. Well, what this whole thing boils down to is business, brother. I already told you why we attacked the WCW. We attacked the WCW for a reason, not because of who was there. I didn't care if General Custer himself or President Clinton was there. We were there for a reason, and we accomplished that mission. Just like when condominiums were burned in Waco, they burned them for a reason, not because of who was in there. That's why, Ric Flair, brother, that's what why I did hell? what I did tonight. I wanted to make sure that since all the fans out here, everybody in the WCW has such a high regard for your past accolades, dude. I wanted to make sure there wasn't a hair missing, a mark, or a scar on your body. Because in a clash of champions, when I step in the ring with the new NWO belt, the new NWO champion, I don't want any excuses, brother, when I wipe you out right in Denver, Colorado, 72 hours from now. All right, a couple of other there things that I want to talk about. We are right now awaiting the arrival of the Outsiders, and they're going to lock it up, as I understand, here tonight with Lex Luger and Sting. Well, you know, without a doubt, the Outsiders are here to clean up a little bit of business for the holster and the NWO, dude. But I want to tell everybody, when my outsiders get done with the Stinker brother and Flexi Lexi, we're going to change all their names. Because everybody has nicknames around here, just like the Nature Boy. They don't apply anymore. We're strictly business in the NWO, and we're going to categorize everybody with certain names, brother. So from now on, people like the Nature Boy are going to be right in the proper category. And as far as I'm concerned, what the starting hell is in he Denver, Colorado, Ric Flair will be known as the stupid little man, brother, because stupid little man, if I would do that to this my like best friend, Kenny Omega if problem. I would do that to the macho man, <laughs> not as bad. I'm going to do to you, brother. Oh, my See God. Jesus. I have got a very, very sick feeling right now in the pit of my stomach. That was awful. <laughs> Vlad, you want to give that promo a rating? <laughs> Look, it wasn't his best work, I will say. He was I stumbling think, uh, all over himself. He was stumbling a bit. <laughs> he was all over the map. He was all over the place. He had some references that I don't think anybody even understood. Don't <laughs> mention Waco, Waco uh, and condominium burning. I mean, he was everywhere. He might have snorted something before this. I don't know. <laughs> look, I don't know. But look, the point I'm trying to make is, it, yes, it was not his best work. I think maybe if, as we progress with this, he'll, I remember he just turned heel recently. So he's still trying to work out his heel. So, so I'm going to give him a pass. 
But yeah, this was obviously not very good. If I had to grade it, it would be a, a pretty bad grade, I guess. A C. It was a C promo. Not his best. Yeah. Stuff. Robert, Definitely not his best. Do you have any comment about this promo before I move on? I didn't get the Waco reference either, but I, I didn't have much of a problem with it until he called Ric Flair a stupid little man. Like, what? That's the yeah. best you, that's the that's best you could come up do. with? Really? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. It was like, a oh, long-winded way of saying he helped Ric Flair because he didn't want any excuses from him. Wants him to be healthy for that match. But okay, let's move along. Let's see what's next. Hey, well, I wish I knew what was going on Eric no, I don't Oh, either. these guys are tripping because Hall and Nash are supposedly coming this is it. I guess it through the audience. W. The production Khan. truck is, they're getting like a but message through the production truck. We can't find him. Somebody tell minute. me what is going on here. I want to know where they are right now or I'm leaving. But there they are. The outsiders. They're coming through the crowd like Moxley. The crowd. They're trying to be cool like John Moxley. Yeah. It's the BCC. That's what it is. They've got to be done. They've got to be controlled. The outsiders in the ring. They said they would do it according to their schedule. Well, the time has come. The time is now. Sting. Sting. I see Luger. I don't see Sting. Oh, uh, what could this be now? driving me nuts. Did they get him about 10, 15 minutes ago? I don't see Hogan either. Sting's music, Sting? surfer music. Where is Sting? Man, Sting. 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 You see that? The Stinger! So what do you think of this, Vlad? This is some action, huh? It's not even a match. These guys just want to go at it. It's a war. It's pretty lit, huh? The second hour has been a very nice hour for them, match-wise. This hasn't started yet, though. The match hasn't started. Nick Patrick won't ring the bell until both sides have one guy on the apron. All the rules. Down here, look what they're doing here now. They're changing the momentum. They're slowing down the match. They're throwing Sting and Luger off kilter. They're going to dictate the speed of this match. But then make a difference. Sting and Luger are going to go out after him. Luger goes after Hall while the Stinger takes care of this. And I'll tell you what, Stinger... Goes outside of the ring and he takes him down. He takes him down. Stinger. Stinger. These guys are going at it. So Hall and Nash really showed up to get down. You see that? It's pretty G. All right, we understand. I'm also getting confirmation now that the Macho Man Randy Savage is getting his head stitched up backstage. It's out of control. The entire situation here in WCW. Macho Man has to get stitched for that chair shot he took from Hogan. Is beginning to take us apart, but Sting and Luger. It looks to me like they have regained ground here. Well, if Macho Man took a chair shot from Nick Wayne's mom, it would have been worse. That Hogan chair shot, it looked pretty weak. He just kind of touched him on the head. And now he's got to get stitches. They just had a straight up fight, these guys. And Hall and Nash get the best of them. Like, it's a battle, but in the end, Hall and Nash are going to put them down. Turning on everyone. Double clothesline. Stinger in control. Double clothesline. And look, he's not making anybody get in the ring or out of the ring. He's not making anybody tag legally. They're just letting it go. Well, this is a little bit confusing. Right hand. Scott Hall gets backed up into the corner. Splash from all the way across the ring. It's a pretty epic scene. Oh, oh. The pulled Hall out the way, right? He did? Yeah. I missed that. Yeah. Let me rewind it. I totally missed it. You missed that? <laughs> yeah. Okay, you're right. Nick Patrick strikes again. So that's how the tide turns for the NWO. And then... And here's Aaron Anderson. The horseman coming. Anderson coming out. Clearly they saw Nick Patrick evidently throwing his hands up and letting anything happen in the ring. The horseman come out. So Hall and Nash, He's they got to bail out. It's too it many here. people. All right, well, I'm going to skip Sting forward a little bit. Pretty much in control right now. Look at that. You saw it right there. Nick Patrick pulled him out of the way. He did. The big question right now, is this guy on the take? All of a sudden, the New World Order getting the worst of it at the hands of Lex Luger and Sting. And pow, the referee walks away. And the clash of champions is coming up this Thursday night. Ric Flair, you and the horsemen are going to be very prominent on that card. Let's draw the guidelines of history. 
right now. Luger and Sting. I don't like him, but I'm going to play ball with him. You know why? Because they're WCW. Now get a wide angle. Hogan, since you took it upon yourself to walk out here and proclaim yourself the immortal one, let me explain something about being a bad guy. The first rule of fighting is you never overmatch yourself. Denver, Hogan, you and I are going to style and profile horsemen style. Yeah, well, that was a great promo. <laughs> what can you say? That was a good one. You'll give that one an A or what? For what it was, yeah, it was pretty good. I mean, it was just to kind of promote the clash and the championship match they were going to have, and he did a good job doing it. Yeah, one thing Flair excels in, especially at this point of his career, is, is the mic. He was one of the greats on the mic. All right, so that was Nitro. So that was the show before Clash of the Champions, which is on a Thursday over on the other network on TBS. So this is TNT here. So let's jump over to that and watch that. Go through that real quick, and that'll be the end of our show today. So this is on Denver, Colorado. Big crowd. Clash of the Champions usually are big shows. It's supposed to be like a pay-per-view quality show on television. Wait, you mean they're not like Battle of the Belt? They're not like Battle of the Belt. It's supposed to be a oh, nice show. Oh, <laughs> a lot of people like here. You mean it's like a, like a pay-per-view quality show? Oh, I see, I see. I <laughs> That's didn't what's understand. Prom- because kind of promised, yeah. It's promised to be like wow, a high-level yeah. show. Wherever you see Unbelievable. Rick Flair, you're gonna see horsemen. All right, so let's see what happens on this show. What do we got? Rey Mysterio over. Versus Dean Malenko. Dean Malenko. You like these type of matches? Dean Malenko with his grappling holds. My brother doesn't like Dean Malenko matches. These were the most boring matches. Even till today, he'll call a boring match a Dean Malenko match. <laughs> well, listen, Malenko with the right opponent, like Rey Mysterio, it was always a very good match, to be honest, for me. So it was a contrast of styles, and they always had good matches. It was a good way to open the show because it would be high quality wrestling match you know you had a combination of ray's high fly stuff and then you had malenko's technical ability he did a flip so. there that was an AEW style flip mike tenay is sure, waiting for the flags like let's see if he flies mike tenay was a mark for people who flip back then he was like an indie mike, wrestling fan mike tenay was a a big time proponent to lucha libre Ooh. wrestling look that looks like that really move. hurt that was a crazy looking move man yeah. look at this shit Gut buster over the knee. Boom. Wow. Boom. That's a, that looks like a painful move, yeah. Yeah. I don't know how you work that. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out where... Oh, and Dean won or what happened? He thinks he won, but his foot was on the rope. So they're going to restart the match. Oh. So he thinks he won the Cruiserweight title, but I guess they're going to have to restart. He's going to get rolled up. Uh, <laughs> if I was Dean Malenko, if I was Dean Malenko, if I was a heel, and I guess he's a heel, I just beat up the referee, man. <laughs> I just beat the hell out of him. I'm like, well, you, you screwed me out of the title, man. You can't. <laughs> what the heck is your problem? Yeah, dude, that was a bad referee job, man. And then before he realized what's even going on, the match has started up again. Like, Jesus. And you let him roll him up like that, and just and that's the way he loses. Yep, I'm punching the referee. Paid for by the following. Oh, slim jam. Oh, yeah. Oh, those were the days. Man. These were the days. Oh, oh. yeah. <laughs> Unlike any cream, snap into a slim jim. Yeah, trading ingredient for liquid fast relief. Okay, so this is VK Wall Street. I guess he was the IRS man in WWE when he's facing Correct. Hacksaw Jim Duggan. What the hell? Ooh, this is a weird random ass match, but okay. Now, I'm gonna, not every I'm gonna, match is great. I mean, you're going to have matches like I'm going to skip that what match. Doing? What are you doing and what's going oh, on? Back to the Nasty Boys. We saw a good Nasty Boys promo last time, so yeah. let's see what they came up with. People are still asking them about what their deal is. What are you doing and what's going on? We're in the WCW. We're the Nasty Boys. Boys, and we're right here to fight and that's all we're gonna do is fight nasty as we always were and I should point out for the record that it seems to me like you have been patronizing the new world order and especially Hollywood Hogan let me tell you something our loyalty stands with the nasty boys it always did but the politics of our 
on the WCW get a little bit screwed up. Why ain't we in the triangle match tonight going for the titles? Because that's what we want. We want the gold. So you know what? The nasty boys are going to have to do, Mean Gene. We're going to have to make a nasty, nasty statement. We don't care if it's Harlem Heat. We don't care if it's the Steiners. And we don't care if it's you, Lex, or Sting. The How the hell does this guy not die the way he's yelling at this? I would have lost my voice at this point. because it's coming right at you. All right, gentlemen, it's amazing, dude. It's amazing. The power in this promo. <laughs> Just so he can yell like that and not lose voice or have a heart attack like you guys said. We want a title shot! We want a title shot! He's still good! I want a title shot, God damn it! Hey, at least they know what they want. It's clear and, con clear and concise. At least they make themselves clear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's true. With all that yelling, you still understood what exactly what the point of what he was yeah. trying to get across. Uh, Denver, Colorado. Gino Let's see what's along next. With Tony Schiavone, Bobby the Brain Heenan, and just an outstanding two hours of action here on TBS. You know, moments ago, back here during the commercial break, I was trying to conduct a backstage interview when all of a sudden Mike Tanay and myself were rudely interrupted by the outsiders. You wonder where the outsiders and where the New World Order are coming from. Well, we did have an opportunity during that interruption to pose some of these questions, prime as they were, and you can hear that exclusive report on the WCW hotline. Give us a call right now. You heard about this? Well, I remember the hotline. I remember the hotline. Call the hotline right now, and let's get you back to more action. Back then, Robert, there was a hotline you could call to get, like, extra rumors and stuff, but it, it cost $1.49 a minute. Damn, Just that's expensive. Rumors? I don't know. He, oh. He's advertising something. I don't know what okay. the heck it is. I'm just saying. I'm, I'm making you aware of this. Okay. I can't say exactly what it was. I never I, actually I don't think called. You, I don't think either of us actually called. But No yeah, way, I mean, bro. I didn't have that much money. There's no way that yeah, could have ended up being like a $20 phone call or something. My dad would have killed yeah. me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I definitely never called because... But I guess they were supposed to give up like rumors and stuff from like the dirt cheek and I don't know. I, I'm assuming. I really is, don't know. This is pre-internet, Avi. Oh, yes. Well, yeah. This is like the beginning of the internet. Was, All right. The 96 was like the beginning of the internet. All right. Let's move along. I got another yeah, Ultimo Dragon match. Let's see who he's facing. Kone. Skipping this one. Ming versus Macho Man. Oh, but Macho Man doesn't show up for this. Because he's hurt from that chair shot on Monday night from Hogan. So he's not medically clear. A mean gene has to come out and explain it to everybody. Thank you very much, Tony. I should point out for the record, the Macho Man here in town of the Mile High City. But because of that injury sustained on Monday night, doctors not allowing him to compete here at World Championship Wrestling. All right, so there was no match, so they let the Dungeon of Doom cut a promo, but I'm going to skip it because I listened to it earlier today. It was not really substantial. Basically, they're trying to put themselves over. They think they're the only hope for WCW to take out the NWO, not the Four Horsemen, but whatever. We got a women's match. I guess for a while they were trying to use their women. Bull Nakano against uh, Medusa. It's a rematch from Hogwild. Same two girls. Eventually they kind of forgot about these girls and stopped using them. For the moment, they, yeah. they, they had her and she was a star they took from WWE, so she was on the card Medusa, Medusa was, yeah. Bull Nakano, I don't know much about her. I think she's a Japanese wrestler. A Japanese woman's wrestler, right? I don't know. I don't know enough about her. But I'm assuming she's a Japanese wrestler. <laughs> some sort. Anyways, it's a Medusa win. Let's move along. DDP, who's he facing? Eddie Guerrero. Who do you think yeah, goes over this? In this is probably, one? probably DDP, but maybe, maybe, maybe Guerrero. Maybe. Oh. Oh, there it is. One, two, three. Oh. Nice. Good win for Eddie. But yeah, DDP's a heel, so he can't really accept the loss. I think he's going to attack him post-match. He's going to pretend to want to shake his hand, but then really give him a diamond cutter. But Eddie's a legend. You'll have a chance to see Eddie for a second. Like, there you go. He even probably got diamond cutter a, a second time, I think. Diamond Dallas the heel. I don't know how he turns face. I'm curious how it happens, but I guess we'll see it coming up soon. Chavo is going to come to save Eddie from this beat down from DDP. Uh, so Chavo comes in, saves his uncle. 
But I'm going to move on from this match. Another Chris Benoit match with woman with his future Mur murdered wife. <laughs> there goes woman and yeah, and Chris Benoit. He's facing off against uh, the giant today. So it's an intra WCW match. Doesn't have anything to do with the NWO, but it's a quick one. This one, I think, woman's trying to take his coat off. But he can't get it off, so he takes a drop kick, like a mean drop kick, and then just a choke slam, and that's the whole match. But it's a cool choke slam. Watch this. Look how high up he is. God damn. So much for Chris Benoit. They must have been short on time. Yeah, sometimes I like a quick match. Yes, there's times where it could work. Yeah. Not every match has to be a long, epic match. The one thing I'll say is Paul White looked freakishly athletic at this time. Like, he was really, for a huge dude, he was he moved quite well. This yeah, that was, drop kick looked really good. Yeah. Benoit took he, it well, he, too. He was a big guy, but moved quite well at this point of his... Strange squash, though. I mean, looks like they're yeah, pushing strange. Benoit. They give him promo time. He's in the horseman. But okay. And then they beat him in two seconds. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm. They could have had a competitive match, but I don't know. Maybe I think short on time is what I would probably guess. The Steiners, this is a triangle match. It's a three way yeah. tag team match with Harlem Heat and Sting and Luger. Sting and Luger, there's for the, Harlem for Heat. For the belts, right? Or is it for the belts, belts, yeah. For the belts. I guess we'll yeah. show some of this because there is NWO interference. So I'll skip forward to what happens at the end of the match. But Sting and Luger are out there fighting with Harlem Heat on the outside. And we've got some company. And we've got some company. It's off camera. Crowd's going crazy. We don't really know what's happening. Right when Scott Steiner was gonna pin him for the three count, like he had him beat, and he's like, <laughs> Nick Patrick begging for his life right there. Well, you bet he did. Scott Steiner's got him by the lapels. It's gonna kill him. He's like, come on, man, calm down. He's like, what do you want me to do? There was interference, man. There was interference. We couldn't see. The outsiders had attacked. And Harlem Heat retains the world. in the Frankensteiner drives his head right into the So this is another angle. This is Nick Patrick's angle. So There's he the sees outsiders. the outsiders oh, come Nash. in. I guess this is what we saw. It wasn't on camera, Out of so we can see again, this. From so there is interference. Like they so carry. Nick Patrick's counting the three, but and two. he has got a clear That's view of what's going on. It's like, no, the three this is interference. This is the outsiders. Disqualification. And calls for the bell. Actually, I, I think in many ways it may have been the right call. I'm not sure. <laughs> Nick Maybe Patrick is the greatest, Gene, is he ready? the greatest referee figure All right, totally in the history of wrestling, Vlad? Patrick, after what, he's hold on. an important referee figure. What Let's, was your call up there? It was a disqualification for outside interference. What do you think it was? Where was the outside interference? Did you watch the same match? Did you not see the outsiders come down here and attack these guys on the floor? Did they get in the ring? No, they didn't get in the ring, but they interfered in the match. Any rule book that's in print today for wrestling, if you look it up, oh, there's outside a rule book. interference is a disqualification. You know, those men never even got into the ring. As a matter of fact, I don't think they ever made it within 30 feet of the ring. That's a good point. They never got in the ring. Which brings me to the one point that I want to get across. What makes a referee great is to be able to see two different things happening at one time. And I've just proved to you in the entire wrestling world that I have that ability. I was in the ring. It's an unfortunate break for the Steiner brothers now. <laughs> don't get me wrong. But I had to watch. You know what? I, I don't want to can you imagine to any AEW referee trying to have a promo like this? They'd be stumbling and mumbling through the whole process. Nick Patrick was a pro, man. A true pro. <laughs> well, I know there's been a lot of unfortunate incidents take place here in the last week and a half. Okay. Well, but I, 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 will I am totally your, innocent. I will WCW all the way. Gene. I'll respect your judgment. I thank you very much. Oh, by the way, I couldn't help but notice those nice Armani suits and everything you've been getting lately. Oh, Looks very scary. good stuff. What do you mean? We've got four on the class. <laughs> 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 uh, NWO giving him oh stuff. Oh my gosh. <laughs> okay, that's really good. 
All right, this is the main event. The last thing we got on the cards for today. It's Ric Flair versus Hollywood Hulk Hogan. How many times do you think the audience has seen this match at this point, Flair? When Hogan signed to WCW, yeah. I think they did that right off the bat. That was probably what Correct. they wanted to do. It was babyface, good guy Hogan versus bad guy Flair. I don't know how many times they did it. Do you have an estimate? A lot. I don't. I honestly don't know. I, I wasn't watching WCW at that point in '94, but they uh, probably did a lot of house shows too. They worked. Oh with, yeah, yeah. They worked with each other like a lot. Yeah, but now put this Hogan over a lot of times when he first came in, a lot. But this is the first time where the roles have reversed. And Hogan's coming in with the NWO music and the black and white yeah. trim on his trunks. Let's see the Hollywood Hogan's entrance here. Hogan just looked super cool as a bad guy too, man. Then he just played it up. He just looks like the guy is gonna walk into a bar and just slap you and leave. And you're not gonna be able to do anything about it. <laughs> slap you and leave. <laughs> what? He's just gonna slap you and leave. It looks like a yeah. It looks like a gang member. You know, it would be kind of funny to see a gang dressed up like this just walk in, act like dickholes, and people just not being able to do anything about it. All right, so let's skip forward into this match we got you're not gonna push around all right so it was like a wrestling match standard wrestling match once the, the hatred and everything once the bell rings it turns into a, a grappling contest with these two so i'm gonna skip forward skip some of this I mean, Ric Flair is not a young guy here. Compared to right now, he is. This is like yeah. relatively young Ric Flair. Look at this Hogan interaction with that fan. Hogan drop back in a face. It's pretty hilarious to see the fans hating on Hulk Hogan. It's still fresh and new at this point. All right, let's skip forward a tiny bit more towards the end of the match. Sending Ric Flair upside See, there's Ric Flair doing some pretty athletic <laughs> stuff. How old do you think Ric Flair is around here? Glad, like 46, 47? He's got to be in his mid-40s, yeah. yeah. These guys still doing a lot to get the crowd worked up for this match, even in their advanced age. They don't look too old. I mean, I don't know. Do you think there's a portion of the audience that thought these guys just looked too old? I mean, WWF wasn't really doing that. Once people got too old like this, they weren't in the main event scene anymore. <laughs> True. True, but Hogan still looked really good, obviously, body-wise. Yeah. And Flair looks pretty good in himself. I mean, Hogan is bald as hell. He was bald even in, in his heyday. Not as bald. He's completely bald here. But it was always funky when it reached that point in the match where he would take off his bandana and you would just see his bald-ass head. It wasn't as cool, you know? Production personnel. No one is safe. All right, let's skip to, uh, I think Hulk Hogan's going to Hulk up. Picks up Hulk! At the end of the match. Look at that stupid little man now, huh, pal? Oh, he's hooking up. We got five minutes left on this show. You want to just let it run? We'll just do a watch along for the rest of it. Sure. sure. So that'll be the end. We'll say goodbye after that. Yeah, he is hulking up here. It's kind of which weird. Which was weird. Which was a weird thing because he was heel. But yeah, I don't think they understood his character at this point. Watch this. Fresh. Watch this. I, I, still, I would almost say this. this time, not still trying to figure it out. He, and I'm almost positive this is the last time he holds. So. Yeah, he doesn't do it again all the way until he fights The Rock at WrestleMania in 2002. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think this is the last time he's told him this. But it doesn't work. You see, when as a bad guy, when he hulks up, he, he drops the leg drop and he missed it. <laughs> he missed it. He missed it. <laughs> I hate the figure four. This is my least favorite move in wrestling. I think maybe it's because I saw it too much growing up. I saw too many Ric Flair matches, but it never worked. It never and No one taps out to the figure four. There's a woman trying to help him. That's kind of funny. Basically, this is heel versus heel for all the Jim Cornettes who say there needs to be a clear baby face and a clear bad guy. I mean, I guess Flair is the baby. Oh, there's the referee. Uh -oh. Oh.
Hogan gave up. I don't know, Tony. I have no idea. <laughs> they just ruined the match to like, fuck this match. <laughs> took off, they went into the seats, they went through a doorway, they went through an opening, I don't know where they are, they may be coming around the other way, you never know. Well, there you they go. Saw the horseman. That's the end of the show. Is it a DQ uh, or is Flair the new champ? Can it's a DQ. So, I was about to say, I like, think Rick, what's the Rick, result? <laughs> Rick Flair wins by DQ. They're going to announce uh -oh. it coming up. What's going on here? What? Sting and Rick Flair in the ring. Luger and Sting came in to help you. There's Hogan. Ladies and gentlemen. Jaw jacking. All right, here referee disqualifying Hulk Hogan. The winner of the match was the result of a disqualification, but not World Heavyweight Champion. So Hulk Hogan's going to get to keep the title. What do you think of that, Vlad, when a bad guy just gets disqualified on purpose to keep the title? It's kind of a cheap way to, to just keep the title, keep the storyline going. Anyone can do it when you think about it. The normal heel thing you do. <laughs> yeah, this was fine. This was actually it was the, one of the ways to end this match, I thought. I, I thought there was a couple weird things in the match. I think, like you said, they hadn't figured out Hogan's character as a heel yet. He was Hulk, you know, uh, you know that, that shouldn't have happened because that makes no sense for his heel character. But overall, yeah, he threw the referee down before he gave up. But he was about to give up, and he, you know, it was all heel stuff, and I thought it was fine. This was fine. This was a fine result for a marquee match. Robert, you got any thoughts on these uh, couple of shows that we watched? Did you enjoy any of this? Was this good, yeah, you think? Yeah, cool, because I know, like I said in the previous couple of episodes, I never saw any of this. So this yeah. is new for me. It's a refresher for you guys, but I've never seen this, so it's cool. It's good to see some of this old stuff that I, I never got to see uh, when it happened. Well, I don't know if we'll go into as much detail about every episode like this, but this one seemed like a particularly strong one, these two episodes that we watched the nitro and the clash of champions that followed so we went into it a little bit took some time to watch it so flat what do you think you enjoying these as much as you did when we were little or is it just interesting in a way or what do you think well i think it's also interesting the stuff that's like not nwo featured just not being very good you know the stuff that's focused on nwo and everything that's involved with nwo was like pretty awesome uh the stuff that really wasn't i still think despite what your brother says i still think there's a place for matches like dean malenko versus Rey mysterio uh <laughs> they're good opener matches they're good matches to have because those like showcase the wrestling of the end of the day these are wrestlers so there's a place for it but at the end of the day there's also a lot of bad stuff that was on there like the opening match the dungeon of doom versus like some four other job guys it looked like i don't know just not very appealing at all but but it had to it had to be that way I think because there had to be something that was the focus and yeah the vocal Absolutely. point of the show it wasn't so chaotic like yeah there were just some matches that were just there to be matches but there was something to look forward to after it and yeah yeah I think the, overall the wrestling for a match like Dean Malenko versus Rey Mysterio even though it's slow and boring to some people it's got correct wrestling psychology it doesn't kill the rest of the show it doesn't make it look bad or stupid or fake. So that's fine. Well, well, the other cases, there are people that appreciate watch WCW not just for the NWO factor. They also there are some fans, maybe a minority of fans, that enjoy that type of wrestling. You know, so there is places for that. I'm talking more about the matches where I don't think there are places for or there's any excuse for. But Ray Mysterio versus Dimango to me is not one of those matches. That's a good match. Like Ray Mysterio versus Ultimate Dragon is a good match, or whatever. Eddie Guerrero versus. Um, Diamond Dallas Page was a good match, probably. You know, I'm sure if we watched it in its entirety, we'd probably say, oh, this was good work. But anyways, yeah, that's my little uh, spiel on the classic wrestling that we just watched. NWO stuff, obviously very entertaining. Everything else, mm, you know, it was what it was. All right, then. Well, that'll conclude our episode today and our recording for this week. So if you like what you're seeing, if you want to keep following this NWO storyline and other older storylines, we'll get to them eventually. But subscribe to our channel. Hit the notification bell. For Vlad, the wrestling expert, and for Robert, the frozen agent, 
I'm Kahan. This has been the Malapert Smart Podcast. Thank you for listening. We appreciate the support. We just need you to click like. Don't please. forget. All right, yeah, guys. We'll see you soon. On. Thanks for coming on.